This short tutorial is going to show you how to back up your iMovie projects. And we're going to look at two types of projects in this tutorial. The first is iMovie projects that are completed. That is to say that you're done with all of the tweaking, special effects, overlays, music, etc. And you're ready to export that final product and back it up that way. This small iMovie project allows me to demonstrate how easy it is to use the share menu and then export movie in order to make a completed finalized version of any project that you're happy with. I will get a single file that takes all of the movies, clips, audio, etc. and flattens them, which means that I no longer need to reference that original material. This single exported file is easily moved to Microsoft SkyDrive or some sort of external storage. But again, this exported file will not allow you to edit or rearrange your project in the future. Our second option is to actually move an unfinished project to another piece of storage. That might be a USB drive or an external hard drive. In order to do that, I'm going to first insert the device that I want to back it up to. I'm going to click on it and then I'm going to tap the space bar. This will give me an idea of how much free space I have. Now this will only be important in order to gauge how many projects we can put on this disk. The more important part is to understand that anything that's on this disk is going to be wiped out. That's because we need to change this disk into a Mac format. I'm going to start by going up to Spotlight and finding the Disk Utility. You'll see that it's one of my top hits. Then I'm going to select my external storage and I'm going to erase that storage. You'll see that what we actually need to change is the format. We're going to change this from an MS-DOS format to either the XFAT or the Mac OS Extended Journal. Either of these formats will work in storing your backed up iMovie projects. However, it cannot be the MS-DOS FAT format because you'll get a number of errors and problems backing up to that format. I'm going to choose the XFAT format because that means I can later use this disk on a Mac or on a PC if I don't fill it up. I'm going to call this my backup, and then I'm going to erase this disk. I get a warning that I will be erasing this disk entirely. That means these two items that are on this device will be completely erased, and there is no going back. Once you hit this erase button, you cannot recover anything that was stored on that external disk. So, it's a good idea to start with one fresh, or to move any files off of that disk before you continue. I'm now ready to erase it. It disappears for a second, but once I go back to my desktop, you'll see that it is completely erased and ready to go. The next step to backing up an iMovie project that is in progress is to open up iMovie itself. This project here, Annotating and Preview, is one that I feel comfortable backing up. You'll see that I also have my backup disks just below. You can copy or move your iMovie video projects to a compatible external hard disk. You'll need to make a decision here so you may want to listen to both before following along. Our first option is to copy the project to the backup folder. That means we're going to have a complete copy on both the Macintosh hard drive, our original source, as well as on our backup external disk. To copy the project, drag it to the icon of the hard disk in the event library. I'm going to let go, and I now have an option to copy the project, or copy the project and the events. 
Because we're doing this in response to completely re-imaging your MacBook Air, we want to copy the project and its events. That means that we're not only going to save everything that we've done in the timeline, but it's also going to create a backup of any of the video clips that we imported from iPhoto or we imported directly into iMovie. If we select Copy Project Only, all we're going to get is the framework, not the actual content. Choosing Copy Project and Events will give us both the framework as well as the content to rebuild that project. My second option is to move the entire project. And what that means is that I'm going to move it from one place to another and not leave an extra copy behind. This process might be particularly useful to those users who just need to free up some space on their MacBook's hard drive. The only difference in this process is that this time I'm going to hold the command button and then drag it to my backup disk. Some of the language has changed in this window. Where we used to see copy, we now see move. The move indicates that I'm going to move all of the files from my Macintosh hard drive to my backup external. It's not going to leave any trace behind. That means that I will not have access to this project or any of its corresponding files until I plug this external disk back in. You'll see again we have two options to move just the framework and leave all of the clips, photos, etc. behind or to move the project and its events. This is the option that we're going to want to use in order to move our items to our re-imaged MacBook Air. So I'm going to select Move Project and Events. This process can take a little bit of time, so you may need to get comfortable or take a coffee break. Now we're ready to recover one of those unfinished iMovie projects that we either moved or copied to our external disk. I'm in iMovie, and you'll see that I'm in the Project Library tab. I don't have any projects listed under my Macintosh HD, and until I plug in my device, it won't show up. So I'll do that now. And it just takes a second for iMovie to recognize my backup disk that I created. This small little triangle next to my backup disk indicates that I can open the drop-down and now I can see that annotating and preview iMovie project that was backed up to my external disk. As a quick review, if I needed to move this project back to my hard disk, I could of course hold command, click on my project, and then drag it back to my Macintosh HD. Again, I'll have the option to move the project as well as all of its corresponding files. Or I could simply double click on the project and get right back to work. You'll see that I have all of my original audio and all of the capabilities to edit my project even though I wasn't finished before I backed it up. Thanks for watching this video tutorial. For more help and tips, check out 7ignites.com or contact your building's technology specialist.